Don't say any Fs and stuff. No investigation. This boy has. There is not really. This to me. Don't say any F's and stuff. But I have to put her on the side. And I'm gonna do doing. what I gotta do for me and my boys and my kids. Don't say any F's and stuff. There is no investigation. This boy has. There is not really. This to me. <laughs> Put her on the side and worry about the boys. I'm gonna do what I gotta do for me and my boys and my kids. Don't say any F's and stuff. Live from the NBD Production Studios, you're in the lab with your host, Joshua Diaz. What's happening? There is no investigation. This boy has not really this to me. But I have to put her. Right. We're on time. On the side. Don't worry about the boys. But I have to. We are on time. There is no investigation. I am. <laughs> Don't say any F's and stuff. <laughs> no. It's one of those things you like. When's he going to start? But I have to put her. Which is to my own detriment, but to be I honest. To put her anyway. On the side. I just figured we have so much board. so much to talk about today that there's really, really no reason to waste any time. And so uh with that being said, our great friend over at the interview room has stopped by. Uh, to hang out and, and uh, have a discussion with us. And Chris, thank you so much for being here and uh, taking time out of your schedule to, to hang out and talk. Thanks for the invite, buddy. Appreciate uh, seeing all the lab rats tonight. Awesome, man. Awesome. So uh, you've been doing good. You look good. You look um, tan. I mean, I don't know. Today was pool day. <laughs> that's that's i mean what's do you get on a floaty oh my body floats i don't need a floaty <laughs> i am one massive floaty you're buoyant yeah I am buoyant. what is it buoyant i used to have the the problem of sinking but that those days are well past me so i'm excited to get into a pool and and see what happens right it's like uh, the bloated body floats. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing, too. Trust me. I, you know, they send me down. I shoot right back up like a like a bottle of, you know, when the, you put, put, put a full bottle under the uh, water and it's just like shoots right back up. That's me. You know, it's uh, it's a terrible, <laughs> terrible feeling trying to dive and getting rejected by the water. <laughs> you ever done that one? Well, I've you know, you're you've passed a threshold when the Navy divers come up underneath you and go, Oh, never mind. And then they go back down. <laughs> it's not so, a manatee. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, exactly. You know, we are in Florida currently, so there you, go. you just don't want to get lost in a spring somewhere. You'd have a whole bunch of tourists around you taking pictures. Yeah. Be careful in Florida. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Paparazzi's <laughs> mad out there too, you know? flying in on private jets and things like that. There's somebody of your caliber. Um, you can only, uh, imagine. That problem. <laughs> so thanks a lot for being here, you know, and you, you and I, we've obviously we talk all the time and, um, there are, obviously there's things going on, uh, at the moment, uh, with Don and Candace, like every single day we have what you 
I don't know. Is it okay if I say, uh, sure. yeah, I mean, I don't know. You sent me a interview that I'd never heard before. And I thought I'd heard every single interview that these two or either one of them have ever done. And, uh, I looked on YouTube. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find this interview. This was less than a month with a reporter from the, what is it? The times news. And it's a very telling interview. Did you, you re-listen to it obviously, right? Yeah. I've had it for quite, you know, obviously since it came out and the one thing you can, you learn in this game. I mean, what's the one thing you've learned about me since you've known me, right? All you of a sudden something tucked. will show up on it. Yeah. Yeah. You keep stuff tucked. Correct. That's which my is, nickname was the vault awesome thing, by the way, the vault, you're the vault. You're and the so floating I, vault. I went to the vault and I pulled it out. I, I love the work that you've been doing on summer's case. And I thought, you know what, <clears throat> Josh needs to hear this and hear it. I did. And, and, it is, it is so, it's just, once again, so telling. And um, the one of the things was, I don't want to change up, you know, just because of recent events and things like that. I don't want to change up what the schedule plan was. I want to keep this about what we are doing, trying to find and find answers uh, for summer. And I think that this kind of stuff, is much more important than personal vendettas or, you know, dramas and, and whatever, whatever's going on. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's not that I don't have thoughts on it. I will have thoughts on it at some point, but today um, I don't know if anybody, I don't know, Chris, like I said, I don't know where you got this. I couldn't find it. I looked, I think it's out there. But it's just, I think people just, forgotten about it i i i suspect i don't know I, I i've had it for so long and you know i've been going back over i've been watching everything i've been watching you know where every, what everybody's saying what everybody's doing right and i thought you know what let's you know go back to what we know what what the basics are and the the closer to the event is typically the information is the most reliable and or the most destructive to those involved in terms of deception or you know that kind of stuff mm. yeah and i i've noticed that too so i uploaded a video uh last or this morning it was the very first time i had ever talked about the summer wells case i, I didn't know who I didn't know who Chris McDonough was. I didn't know who Don Wells really was, Candace Wells. I never had any interactions with any of them. And I went back from, it was, the, I believe, somewhere in July of 2021. And while while I wasn't as, as acquainted with the facts of the case or whatever, you, you know, you want to say, uh, I wasn't that far off of how I feel today. Not a lot really has changed. And, and it, it seemed uh, obvious to me then it seems obvious to me now that there is uh, some sort of smokescreen deception two years strong, to be honest with you, nothing's changed. Uh, nothing. I mean, especially with, what I would call the prime suspects, you know, law enforcement doesn't say that, but come on, you know, like I don't well, what law enforcement says is nobody's off the table. So that means, does that mean you know, me? It, it, probably not, but uh, right. that's what I'm saying. But, but by the way, we've both been accused by Don of possibly being involved. Yeah. I mean, there you drove you know. your airstream after she went missing, after you found out about it. And that, you know, it was a, it was like a time warp to the side or some, some, somehow, some way you took your airstream and put it through a time continuum. Like captain Kirk went back in time, you know? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen you do stuff like that before. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's kind of like, you know, <clears throat> 
it, it, it's just craziness. And that's where you just got to measure it and say, okay, well, remember every behavior has a purpose. So what's, what's the purpose behind that craziness? You know, I mean, you've, you can blame everything and everybody, um, you know, even Lawson's been blamed and his son's oh, been blamed and this person and that person and this person. But, but it's interesting when you watch, you know, some of the news stuff in the very beginning, the very beginning. This is something I'm telling you. Uh, so we'll, we'll, you know, and tell me, you, you know, when you have thoughts and, you know, I, I got it right here. I could stop, rewind. You just let me know. Um, but yes, this, I'm going to play this. We're going to react to it for you and kind of give our thoughts on, on this very, very early. And this almost seems like an informal interview, but like he was like a checkup or a check-in or yeah, it was a follow-up follow-up interview. Uh, very, very early on, probably on the, on the phone, probably one of like the second, maybe the third interview at the most one I had never heard. And, um, and by the way, Josh, I, I think this Trev time, you just keep your heads up, but you stay the course. Love him. Love him. I watch a, your stuff. He's a tenacious kid, man. But, well, you know, he's kid. a young man. I, I hate calling him a kid, but like I'm he's old. been accused. Oh, he's been accused. Oh, you should hear. Did you hear that? I mean, I'm sure you saw the stuff they were saying about him. Same stuff they say about all of us. We should put it all up on a board. Yeah. We should get a grease board. You you need one of those little mini grease boards. I have one. It's up here, but it keeps my other stuff. But I have, uh, you know, I I have books. So I have little notebooks. But yeah. Anyway, go ahead. I you know, it's, it's no, well, it's just. It's just convicted this and, you know, pedo that that's what that's the, the stuff that they it's quite the deflection seminar, really, if if you really get into it. I call it wheels on the bus. No. And the, the weirdest Gosh. part about it is there's buses involved. I hate that, too, by the way. The photograph <laughs> wheels on the bus go round and round. Yeah, and then Don laid under a bus on the side of the road. Apparently, and this is just from what I heard, that they were out driving that thing around to get the engine cleaned or whatever it was. Can you imagine Don Wells and Tim Mullins driving that bus on Beach Creek? You're like, hey, Don, pull over. You get under the bus. I'll take a picture of you and be like, hey, look, everybody, you're being thrown under the bus. Ha, 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 ha. Hopefully they weren't picking up kids. <laughs> I, I used to say this all the time i would say you know i know that people take those things and they convert them into something else all the time but like i think that it's still pretty standard on the inside like if you drive a bus and you're not a like if you drive a school bus specifically and you're not a school bus driver that should be looked into a little right Hey, I'm not going to say a word, you know, I mean, just the fact that it, the fact that that I, you know, you, you just mentioned, I didn't even know that till 30 seconds ago, but it. What, that they were supposedly driving that bus around? Yeah. That's like, no my, that's one of the best, like that's, that is close to the crack ferry of Knoxville. You know, it's. And uh, then, you know, Trevor, and I think I put him up on the screen before, but Tre Trevor made a couple memes and it had like Tim Mullins with like a stop like a safety vest and a stop sign, you know, like while people were getting onto the bus and it, it was pretty hilarious. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I think that, I think if we keep focusing on what the facts are towards summer, then we'll be good to go. I agree. I agree. And so let's go ahead and just break right into this. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know who has heard this before. I don't know who hasn't. I, I don't know. But this will just be my second time hearing it. And um, thanks again. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. I guess, you know, we're coming up on a, on a very sad milestone tomorrow with the, being the, the fourth week. You know, the yeah. uh, one, but, but yeah. basically a month since, since summer went missing. And I okay. So this is just. Just shy. So I don't believe the boys had been taken at this point either. Correct. 
I just wanted to check in with you all and see, um, you know, if there have been any new developments or anything that changed. Nothing. Cuts them off right at the pass. No, nothing. Uh, and in his and in his mind, that's the end of the conversation. But it's not. No. That's real discouraging. Only God can turn this around at this point. Only God can turn this around at this point. That's another staple. You know. How, uh, how is your family coping? Well, my wife. I don't know who the interviewer is. I know that he's from the Times News. I'm sorry. I, I don't have that information, but he is a reporter for 30 something years. I'll get his name. I'll figure, I'll find it out. Uh, but anyway, I think she's good. She's not done too good at all. She's pretty upset. I can, I can imagine. Um, is she, I mean, is she having, is she needing uh, help or anything or? No, I'm just, just kind of some anger issues and Jeff you know and all this stuff on the social media is just I know that's 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 out of line. That's, that stuff's out of line, way out of line. Yeah. How are how are your kids doing? They're coping with it okay. You know, they're doing okay. Just, I'm not I mean me, I'm upset. I've just made the decision. I made up my mind not to let Satan win. You know. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? Which- what a great question by uh, Jeff there. How, how do you do that? What, what uh, steps do you not, take personally? To not let Satan win? Yeah. Not let him get down. Um, not to, you know, I mean, I could, I could be down and not go back to work and let it affect me in every way, but I can't do that. This is three weeks after he believes that his daughter has been abducted by a stranger. Well, you still got a family to raise also, I guess, too, don't you? So, uh, yeah, so, so I still got to move forward. I still got to go to work. I still got to try, even though I miss her and wish to God it was a way, you know, but we live in an evil world. I mean, I ain't the first one. I'm, you know, to lose a family member or all kind of tragedies been happening since the, the beginning of this uh, creation. You know? So this to me, Chris, is nothing more than a distancing tactic by Don where he said, you know, this kind of stuff's been going on since the beginning of the world. We're not talking about the beginning of the world and we're not talking about anything else. Um, it, you got to stay on topic. Go ahead. Yeah, no, we're four, you're four weeks into this. You're hundred percent right. And you know, he's not the first. Neil. No, no. To to lose a family member. In fact, this would be actually be the second family member. Which is Gross. unheard. Of. Which is unheard of. Statistically, is it's 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 pretty rough unless you live in the in the vario somewhere and everybody's in you know, gangbangers and two brothers get shot. Right. Let me just times news. And this was July 13th. I run a banner at the, so, so the, it was, it, it had to been, um, obviously the following day was the anniversary of the one month anniversary. So what I have here is the 13th. So it could either be the 13th or the 14th, but yeah, just shy of a month. Right. And let me, I just want to make sure people know what we're listening to here. Yep. Oh, there's been all kind of bad stuff going on. Fans can't tell us kind of like a bad dream or whatever. Yeah, it does. And my memories of the summer and everything is just, that's what kills me because we had such a great love for each other. She just, she loved me and I don't know why I've never had someone love me that much. Okay. I've, I've heard him say this probably 30 or 40 times. Well, the, 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 the most interesting also part of that 
she loved me and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. No, I'm just kidding. I wasn't well, crazy. are there reasons not to love him is the question. Yeah. Meaning oh. it, from Summer's perspective. Right. You know, remember when you're doing a victimology and if, if, if you were, if I was interviewing this guy and he had said that, I'd say, well, what do you mean by that? Why would she not love you? You see, that, that's kind of a, an open-ended statement that he makes, but it doesn't really get qualified. So back that up for a second. I want to hear that again. That's what kills me because we had such a great love for each other. She just she loved me, and I don't know why I've never had someone love me that much in my life. And so it's yeah. been awesome, you know, between me and her. Yeah. And my memories the summer. You go back a little bit. I'm sorry. It's He's been never happening since the, the beginning of this uh, creation. You know, there's been all kind of bad stuff going on. It, it, it does seem kind of like a bad dream or whatever. Yeah, it does. And my memories of the summer and everything, it's just, that's what kills me because we had such a great love for each other. She just, she loved me. And I don't know why I've never had someone love me that much in my life. Well, you know, some of that can right we can we can read into he he has spent the majority of his life in prison so uh, you know this is why it becomes relevant to always looking at the victimology and the circle of influence around the the victim summer uh, because those are some really interesting comments. I, and I didn't catch that till 30 seconds ago. Um, and of course, we know what Jeannie and Mary and other people have said, Rhonda. So when you take that into consideration, is he considering that subconsciously? I don't know. And so it's been awesome, you know, between me and her and... So it's really it's killed me since she's been gone. You know, it's just it's, at first it, it was just so horrific knowing that someone abducted her and the cops are looking all around her house, knowing that she's not there, you know. All right. <clears throat> so it sounds like what he was trying to tell them was, look, she's not here. Why are you looking around my house or our house? Um, and they're not listening to me. Um, I would think that telling some telling the law enforcement where to look is probably not something that they're too interested in. I mean, they'll 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 take his suggestions and you know what he knows. Don wasn't there supposedly. Okay, so of course you're gonna look in the house first. Uh, she could be you know hiding somewhere. She could be you know. I don't know. That's what that you know what I mean? She could have been hiding in the house for for all we know. But no, 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 no. Don't check the house. I'm not saying and the thing is I, I, you know, I don't think that personally I, I don't I don't know where she was or where she is, but um they're not going to listen to that. You no, know, it's like it's like you just talking to yourself, and, you know, just saying doing no good. But, you know, I wish the police would have had they would have blocked off both ends of Beach Creek and everything else and kept it contained in our area because I'm sure she's hundreds of miles away. Yeah. So he gives us, he gives solutions uh, that would have prevented the escape. Blocking off both ends of Beach Creek. Right. So I wish they would have blocked off both ends. Right. So presuppose and, you know, a thought process, right? She's taken. And then he's like, I wish they would have, you know, blocked off both end of Beach Creek. And that would have basically 
stop the an escape. It would have prevented an escape route. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, part of me thinks that, like, when he said said what he said to them, I mean, you know, di di diverting resources to to different spots that. You know, I mean, we have there's search and rescue. I mean, these people, the people that were searching, it's not that, it's not that they didn't know what they're doing. I mean, the kid has, Summer has disappeared, like off the face of the earth, and all they know is that she's not there. That's it. And Don's Don's giving them advice on how to find her. Well, he's he's he comes to the party with a firm knowledge of abduction. Right. Okay, why? Because there was because there's a narrative. Right. Well, He's setting the narrative. Yeah, there But if you were to ask him even today, why? How? Why? Why do you know this? What do you get? What's the answer you get? He just knows it in his heart. Yeah, because, or he shifts it to Candace. I believe my wife. Yeah. So what he does is he keeps it within the circle. He doesn't come up right away when that first question is, is offered, right? Meaning, so why, why, and you know the cops asked him this question. Why do you feel that way? Well, I believe my wife. And you know the cops' next response is going to be, well, could she be lying? No, she would never lie. And that's what you hear. And I've asked him that same exact question. I'm sure you have as well. I actually know you have as well. And it's answered the same way, but here we go. Oh, they just... I can't blame them or whatever, but I'm upset. I'm really upset, you know. Um, but it's, it's too little, too late now. Too little, too late now. So he's talking about, I think he's referring to the search or that they should have blocked Beach Creek off. Um, he's not blaming them, but he's upset about it. Yeah, go back and play it in full context. Gotcha. They would have blocked off both ends of Beach Creek and everything else and kept her looking all around her house. No one that she's not there, you know, it's like mm -hmm. it's like you're just talking to yourself, you know, just ain't doing no good. But, you know, I wish the police would have had they would have blocked off both ends of Beach Creek okay, and everything else. Back one more time. Kept it contained in our areas. But at first it it was just so horrific knowing that Someone abducted her, and the cops are looking all around her house. No one, she's not there. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it's like you're just talking to yourself. Okay, so, you know? so, in his mind, he's projecting that the police should have known that she was abducted and that she would not be there. And he is he's presenting a narrative that the police should have known this when they got there. And therefore, searching the house was basically a waste of time because Don knew it when he got there that she was abducted. And even before he got there, he even says it. Okay. So that in of itself, that that's a very problematic uh, scenario because he has now pre- positioned a law enforcement response in his head and he is now selling that narrative hundred percent agree I mean uh, it, to be to be so adamant about it when you should be open to all possibilities I'm, and, and I'll just say this if my wife was at home with my child I was at work and she went missing. Um, I'm not saying that I'd be like, yeah, my wife is 
guilty or anything like that. But you basically like, Hey, you know, you really got to talk to her. I, I, I wasn't here. I have no idea. I believe what she's telling me, but I don't have the answers. You know, I'm not, I wasn't here. Well, if how many of us have ever had one of our kids in a, at home or even in a public setting, just, you know, run and hide, right? That, that adolescent, that five-year-old, six years old, they do that. Kids do that. They play Superman or whatever, and they disappear. Right. right. And you call the cops and you want to say to the cops, look, the kid's not here. He's been abducted. And the cops are going, well, well, how do you know that? Well, I just know. I just know he's been abducted. And then Officer Friendly finds him underneath the bed hiding. Okay. You see how weird that sounds, just me saying that? This is yeah. what law enforcement does all day long. They get calls of missing kids all day long. And they don't roll up and the parents say right away, hey, hey, don't search the house because he's been abducted. In fact, 99% of the parents are in the house tearing the place apart and they're, they're begging you, get more people here, help us, help us search this house. Not the opposite. Right. Go ahead. Agreed. Knowing she's not there, quote unquote. Right. No good, but you know. And by the way, I just want to say, uh, for the record, <clears throat> I don't know if Donald responded to this or whatever. But what what he let me just respond for him. He's going to say that we're twisting his words. <laughs> I wish the police would have had they would have blocked off both ends of Beach Creek and everything else and kept it contained in our area because. I'm sure she's hundreds of miles away. Wow. You know, they just, I can't blame them or whatever, but I'm upset. I'm really upset, you know. And, and, uh, Kumi B, uh, I, I've starred your question and I am starring people's questions, uh, and, and we will get back to them. I don't, I just don't so, want to break the flow. The, the using the, the terminology is, I'm sure. That, that's a very definitive comment. I'm sure she's 100 miles away. Does that mean she was transported? And I'm not saying he or she or who, but does that mean somebody has knowledge that she's 100 miles away or at least out of that area? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, but it's too little, too late now. Um, I guess this is probably, I don't know if this is something that has been on you. Don, you're welcome to come up and discuss this with us, uh, if you'd like, in, in all honesty, with no, no judgments, no fighting, you know, I don't want to, want to hear the truth. <laughs> In your family's mind, but you've got to kind of move on with the business of living. And I guess one of the things is. Uh, and Don, this isn't a, a recorded, secretly recorded phone call. This isn't anything like that. This is you talking to a reporter, and that's what we're doing. We're going over your words to the reporter. Your kids have to go back to school and. I was wondering if you all had given any thought to that, and if that's going to be a, if that's something that's going to be hard to to do to try to take them back to school. Well, I mean, I don't know why, but they're dealing with it okay more than me, and they're doing a lot better than me and Candace are. Mm -hmm. Not why that is, but I don't know. Because when I was in school, one of our one of my guys that one of the kids in, that was in school with us bought his son a shotgun and somehow it accidentally went off and killed his dad right in front of him. And we never did see that kid back in school again, but that was his daddy though. It's, it's a, 
there's a difference, you know, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, maybe they're, my kids are looking at it like, well, maybe God will bring her back or I don't know. But statistically speaking, I mean, there's, there's a good chance she's already dead if you look at it statistically. Mm-hmm. Okay, so back up. Uh, go back to uh, where he talks about I don't know why, and he's talking about his family. Uh, why that is? One of the things is uh, your kids have to go back to school, and that, uh, I was... no, yeah, but yeah, keep going. Go a little bit further back. Um, it has been on your, in your family's mind, but you've got to kind of move on with the business of living and I guess uh, one of the things is uh, your kids have to go back to school and I was wondering if you all had given any thought to that and if that's going to be a, if that's something that's going to be hard to to do to, try, to take them back to school well I mean I don't know why but they're dealing with it okay more than me and they're doing a lot better than me and Candace are mm-hmm. not why that is but I don't know. Because when I was in school, one of our one of our guys that one of the kids in, that was in school with us bought his son a shotgun, and somehow it accidentally went off and killed his dad okay. right in front of him. When we never did see that kid back in school. Okay, so this is an interesting thought. He's talking about how. The kids are emotionally coping with the incident. But what, and what incident does he give to um, correlate? He gives an accidental shooting. And how and how that kid dealt with it? They never saw him again. But the act was an accident. It's interesting. I didn't think about that. So, is he inferring there's an accident somewhere here in this scenario? Go back and play that again, and that the boys. They're they're getting along fine, but I don't know. parents are having a difficult problem. Something that has been on your, in your family's mind, but you've got to kind of move on with the business of living. And I guess uh, one of the things is uh, your kids have to go back to school. And I was wondering if you all had given any thought to that, and if that's going to be a, if that's something that's going to be hard to to do to try to take them back to school well i mean i don't know why but they're dealing with it okay more than me and they're doing a lot better than me and candace are mm-hmm. not why that is but i don't know because when i was in school one of our one of our guys that one of the kids in, that was in school with us bought his son a shotgun and somehow it accidentally went off and killed his dad right in front of him and we never did see that kid back in school again, but that was his daddy, though. It's, it's a, there's a difference, you know, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, maybe they're, my kids are looking at it like, well, maybe God will bring her back. or I don't know. But statistically speaking, I mean, there's, there's a good chance she's already dead if you look at it statistically. Mm-hmm. Okay, stop. So that event, and I'm not inferring uh, that, Summer was shot in any way, shape, or form. Okay, let's take that off the table. What I am more interesting in listening to is the fact that he's correlating an event that happened while he was in school about an individual whose father accidentally died in a gun accident. And then he brings that back to Summer and he uses a statistical comment about that she's probably dead. Um, 
Don, I, I have sent you a link if you'd like to come up. Uh, making snide, you know, you're welcome to make your snide comments in the chat, but we're going to continue doing this no matter what. Is he in chat? I didn't even know. Oh, yeah, he's in chat. He's right there on the screen. He called you a good actor, too. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Let's, let's hear the truth. <laughs> Like I said, he, he's he's more than welcome to come up here. Like nobody's going to attack. Okay, well, yeah. well, well, he's figuring out if he's coming up. Let's stay yeah. focused. Yeah. I love her with all my heart, but only God. You know, if, if nothing else, you know, I'll, I'll see her in the resurrection. As long as I keep the commandments and I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll see her in the commandments. Mm -hmm. If that's the case. Okay, so let's stop. So we we know for sure that 29 days into this, if we use a 30-day calendar month, Summer, in his mind, is not alive. Right. So that's what? 29 days. That's three weeks post her disappearance. correct so we're two years or we're almost two years into this now 20 22 months or so yes there's no link i sent it to you oh my god here this this link is for don and don only i sent it to your i don't know you probably blocked me again or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know but i'll 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 drop it here Um, okay, and then we'll just keep going. Yeah, keep going. It's it's uh, it's a game. Um, so is it going to be just kind of back to business when school starts and the kids are going to go back? Yeah, we ain't got the choice. We don't have a choice, you know. I was just wondering if there was maybe any kind of fear or concern just to let them out of your sight after... Well, yeah, definitely. We won't. We was sending them down, you know, to the school bus by themselves, you know. But I don't think we're we'll, we'll ever do that again. Mm -hmm. Do they get picked up at the end of your road there on, on Beach Creek? Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. And uh, of course, you're back to work, and the kids are going back to school. So it, it seems like there's no choice but to try to return to some sort of normalcy within this right. horrible event. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not going to let Satan convince me to go drinking or whatever. You know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going down that road. I, I choose life. Mm -hmm. Choose God. You know, and I, that's probably, you know, I've never... Stop that. Re rewind that again. Did he say, I choose life, she's gone? Did I hear I that correctly, or did I just miss that? Let me see here. There's no choice but to try to return to some sort of normalcy within this right. horrible event. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not going to let Satan convince me to go drinking or whatever, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going down that road. I, I choose life. Mm -hmm. Choose God. So I choose life. I choose God. Okay. I choose God. Okay. Go ahead. You know, and I, that's probably, you know, I've never, you know, before in my life I was weaker and just the least little thing would be the excuse to go get drunk or whatever, you know, but not no more. Not, and this is the most horrible thing that I could have ever even thought of happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, um, has your has your theory about what happened to to Summer changed any since since we spoke a couple weeks ago? Uh, can you just turn your camera on for one second, please, and then you can turn it right off. Cool, gotcha. Thanks. You can turn it off now. Hey, Don. How y'all doing? Doing fine. How are you? I'm hanging in there. I just 
listen to this all this crap over and over and over for two years. It's getting old. Well, it may, it, yeah, I mean, I could understand that from your point of view. We're, we're, we're going over a phone call. Do you remember this? Uh, it wasn't a phone call. It was actually an interview. Do you remember this interview? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't remember who it is. I mean, you know. Jeff Bowman, I believe his name is. Yeah, we had a lot of interviews we shouldn't have had interviews with. McDonough's the worst one. Well, he's but, right here. You can tell him yeah, if you want. I know he's right there. I should have never done anything with him. What did he do? Let me just ask you really fast to be and, and be completely fair and honest. What did he do? I, I don't know why he's the way he is. I mean, no, I, no, I don't, it's not about, I'm asking what did he do? Oh, I don't understand why y'all going over this for two years straight. How does this? I mean, like you're, you know, like a witch hunt, honey, for yeah. every little clue. And I know I get it. It's about your YouTube channel, you know. And that's right. really what it amounts to. Right. That's fine. That's fine, you know. But hey, I thought you took off on a flight. Hold on, I'm, let me. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Hold on a minute. Better. I will. All right. All right. I'll be, just give me a little few minutes. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry. Yeah, I don't understand. You know, I'm mean, how it, all this helps find somewhere or anything else. You know, and everybody bitches because I'm not out. It, it, you know, looking constantly for her. Well, damn, you know, send me money where I can go look for her 24-7. And that's what I'll do. Because ain't nobody sent me no damn money. Ever. And nobody sends my wife money like everybody wants to think. That's not true. I have to well, work for we, living. We weren't talking. We, I wasn't oh, even covering that. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. A lot of people say stuff like that. You know, it's, you know I'm not saying you're saying that. But. I, yeah, I, I wasn't. I'm not interested in, in her really. I'm not interested really with Candace and Kathy's relationship. Right. Um, you know, we're just, talk, we're just talking about this interview, to be honest. Right. I don't know which interview it is. You know, a lot of times, you know, when when people do interviews, and Chris McDonough is good at it to, to, to push the narrative and everything and twist everything up. Y'all are good at that stuff. You got done. You know, I'm sorry. I'm not trying. I'm okay. Yeah. Let me okay. ask you that. What did Chris? Uh, what did McDonough do to you that you feel is so egregious? I I, I really am I'm truly curious because I, all he did was do an interview with your wife and, and that was agreed to and play it. Yeah, and he acted like a snake when he went to my house. Oh, he's hiding in the shed. Oh, they're watching uh, porn on the TV and all kinds of bullshit like that, like he does. Well, I don't yeah. think he did say that it wasn't porn. Well, I don't know. If that's what I remember. Some, something like that, you know. Okay, we'll clear it up right now. Were you in the shed? Well, hell no. Okay, I was then. I was Fair there. enough. Did Candace call you from uh, the dollar store? Uh, hell, I don't, I don't know what to say that's about. I have no idea. Then, then how do you know I said the porn thing? Well, I seen it on your uh, on the your, on your YouTube channel. I watched it. Well, said, I didn't know what it was. It was uh, Girls Gone Wild, right? No, it was not because you well, could see the screen on your when you, it was, when, I, you could see the screen when you said that. Well, it well, was not, well, it well, was not well, Girls Gone Wild. Whatever you, you know, what it, I don't know. I'm not sure what it was, but. You still there? He's still, yeah, I think he's probably going through a, yeah, he's still there. Someone's called blowing my phone up now because they don't want yeah. me talking to the guy. Okay. Well, well, let's, let's talk about summer. Cause I think I could still help you. Well, out of respect for each other. I think he's going. He's. I think he's going in and out of reception. Um, People are going to stop him to talk to me, and I. And I have no idea why, because uh, well, he wants to talk to me. Evident of the fact that he came up. Right. Right. Well, so and, I'm, and, I'm here to talk. I'm here to help. And we weren't even talking about. I'm not talking about the money thing that they were been accused that's, of. That's another day for them. Yeah, I don't care about that. 
It's probably so, 10. Go ahead, Don. Um, we're, you're back. I'm not. You can't hear me? Yeah, you're, yeah. you're back, man. Go ahead. You can hear me right now? Yeah, we yes. can hear you. Okay, because I can't hear it, and I'm not even on StreamYard. That's weird. I think Doug, I'm just blowing my phone up. Who? Well, we we don't really need to say his name. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Of course he is. Isn't that the guy that got arrested uh, in the uh, Orn and Orson <laughs> search? I, I have no idea. They're all criminals. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I, I, I'm, I know he did actually for something. <laughs> so Don, if you can hear me, let's, you know, let's talk about it. You want to talk about it. I know you do. And I want to listen. Okay, well, let's keep playing the the, right. the stuff while he figures it out. No, she was abducted. There's, you know, I forget how you put that re reasonable de deduction or however you say that. Mm -hmm. You talk school, you know, but by that theory there, yeah, she's been abducted in my mind 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Candace wouldn't lie to me about any of the facts. She has no reason to, you know, I mean. But, and, and so, you know, reasonable deduction, he's like, well, you know, nothing could have happened. Nothing did happen. The only thing that could have happened is an abduction. And that's that's his reasoning. You there, Don? And that's based on Candace not lying to him. Correct. Yeah, he be yes. He's standing by Candace for this. She wasn't law. Have uh, and he, I think somebody said or, or you you told the media that that she she was lie detector test and you took one also. And, yeah. And, well, and the, the you all were cleared of of any suspicion as you know based on that. Well, I don't know if we were completely cleared because that's not admissible in court. Yeah. Um. Any any thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, he wants another link. Jesus, can he come back? Yeah, he can. I mean, it's only it's only fair to let him. I'm gonna kick him here. Let him come back in, and then we'll just keep going. Let's just keep going. Yeah, but. But yeah, we both, I mean, at first, you know, I, I didn't get no sleep for two days. I couldn't sleep. I was, you know, I, it was the worst misery and pain I've ever felt in my life. But uh, I wasn't, I wasn't able to take a lie detector test. They made me wait a little bit, but when I did take it, I passed. They made Candace wait five days longer to take hers. And, you know, because she just wasn't able to. She tried, and she wasn't able to. Okay. So, hold on a second. Well, that... You there, Don? Yeah, but somebody's going to keep... They're going to keep blowing up my phone. It cuts me off. I don't know if I can turn something off or they can't call. I don't know. Do you have an what? iPhone? Yes. I believe that if you put it in airplane mode... Uh, or, or, or do on. not disturb. Put it on do not disturb. You can swipe up at the top, and there's a there's a there's a, you can, it's like personal driving. Do not disturb. All I got is a little airplane. Um, that's all I see. That, so I think that if you um, are you on Wi-Fi at the moment? Come on. Uh, yeah, well, I don't think so. No. So I don't know. Okay, well, let, let, let's just... So what 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 do you want to say, Don? I'm listening. Uh, I mean, we want to find Summer just as bad as anybody, you know. You know, and everybody acts like, you know, we're, 
we're, I don't know. It's just heartbreaking. No, I, I understand it. And we're, it's, go ahead. We've been through pure hell. You know, and nobody can be prepared for losing a child. I'm sorry. You will lose your damn mind. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to act. You don't know what to say. You are mentally numb. You, you, a piece of you is gone. And I, I don't know. Unless, unless you've been through it, I mean. Well, you, you do know. know yeah, you both, you and Candace, know I lost my son. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, and somebody was, tried to abduct a child of yours too. Are you? He, yeah, he tried. Well, the, that was the my oldest boy, right? But my middle son, he was twenty years old when he died. Yeah, that hurts. Hurts a lot. Right, and so, and so, I do understand where you're coming from, and actually, that's why one of the reasons, you know, I came over early on, and you know, remember the time when after quite frankly, that program that when it first aired with, with Candace, I mean, she was actually put in a pretty good light. I mean, very fair, balanced people, you know, responded on that. And, and you got mad at me, remember, and called because you thought, because I said, I thought you were in the shed that you oh, demand. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. And you, and you, you know, you, cussed me out from top to bottom and which I, you know, I didn't understand it, but I'm okay with it. But at the same time, uh, you know, I was trying to help you and you, you know, we just didn't click at that moment. So what, what can the cold case foundation do for you? Because I think the biggest problem that we're having, and when I say we, i.e., a lot of people, and I think even yourself, I really believe that, you know, if you, if, if you're not there, then Candace is. And I think that you are, maybe this was an accident. And there's a lot more to the story, but, you know, you well, got see, the thing of it is, see, yeah. I've, I, I, I live with Candace. I know Candace. You know, I was, I know her emotions. I know she's got a severe broken heart. You people don't see that side of her. You've seen a lot of negative things and I apologize for that. You know, yeah, we've done, we, we turned to alcohol and everything else. Um, we screwed up, but you guys haven't seen her, her broken heart like I have. I've, I've seen her mental state. I know how badly she's hurting and I know how much she loved her little girl. And I know even if there was a mistake, she knows better than to do something shady. She would call an ambulance. She would call law enforcement right away. She would never try to do something shady like that. Well, I'm not saying it's shady Don, and you're not saying I, I hear where you're coming from. And I, I respect what you're saying, but you and I both know we've, you know, we've been around the block a couple of times and, oh, yeah. and people get stuck. And when they get stuck, they, they panic. Uh, and that's not shady. That's just a panic. Yeah. And, well, she and I, go ahead. I'm listening. It's nothing like that. I, 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 I know in my heart, I, you know, I can try to, you know, convince you guys all day long but i know in my heart somebody took a daughter i know okay. that okay how do you know that um just by like i said uh, by her emotions everything we've been through and not only that you guys are leaving out a hell of a lot uh, well, like what what are we leaving out so let's not leave okay. anything out okay my boys were home my okay. boys were the very last ones to see my daughter. Okay. okay. They were upstairs, remember, playing their games. I've talked to my, my boys, um, you know, extensively before, well, during the police interviews and everything else. They, 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 the police took my boys to specialists 
because they can't just outright question them because they're underage. And they talk to them, and I've talked to them, and you know they feel bad. You know, um, they feel like it's their fault, even. You know, um, but I try to assure them that. Why would they think it's their fault? That just because they were the last ones to see summer. They're gonna keep blowing up my phone. I don't know why they do this. That's all right. Because because like you say, they're more con concerned about what they're doing. But right. uh, why why did the why did they or why do they feel guilty? Um, okay, well, well, let me explain. Because okay, Summer wanted asked them to please go downstairs. Then she wanted to go downstairs and play with toys, and they wanted 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 to play their games. You know. Which I understand, I, you know, they wanted to, they all had phones and games and they wanted, yeah. they was watching that building, little, I can't remember what it's called, where you build stuff on the TV, I don't know what it's called. but Probably um, Minecraft. Yes, Minecraft, that's it, Mine, yes. Minecraft is what we used to call it. <laughs> right, right. But go but, ahead. But, but yeah, so she went downstairs by herself and next thing you know, Candace comes in after helping her mother. That's her words. I wasn't there. I'm going by what she said. Okay. Uh, but also, I'm going by what my boys said. Okay. And, uh, Did she fall down the stairs, Don? No. Okay. It, Could she have? Was, even if she did, I had uh, I had some side barriers and stuff, you know. And, you know, now, and I'm not saying I'm not saying she did. I said even if. Like you just said, even if she did, you, he had you had side barriers. But could well, she? I, did even if she did? I mean, she's a tough girl. I mean, kids are pretty tough, you know, when they're young. Um, had she ever fallen down those stairs before? No. no. Ever? No, man. She's she she can she can get around good. She's very smart and very agile. Uh, okay. No, no. So she wants to go downstairs. As to play with stuff, then what? Well, as far as we know, I mean, mom come in looking for her. They couldn't find her nowhere. They looked for a while and couldn't find her. And she called me and I says, hang up for me. Call 911 right away just in case, you know, you can't find her right away or whatever. Just to make sure, call 911. And when I got off the phone with her, since she hung up, I called 911 from where I was at, and they had to switch me over from the 911 op operator to the 911 operator in August County. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I flew home as fast as I could. Right. And then when I got there, I drove straight to the bottom property just because I know I have a good view of the hill, and I seen my neighbor to the left of me. I've seen all three of my boys to the right of me together. Like I told them, you know, always be together. If you're going to be out off the off the hill anyway. And when I seen that they were down on the bottom property, basically looking around and she wasn't on top of the hill, I figured she wasn't there. You know, and then that's when it got real crazy. I, I, I drove up to the top of the hill uh, and there was like one or two police cars there at that time. And of course they're questioning us. They're doubting. I felt in my heart right then that she was taken. What were they doubting? Well, I was trying to tell them that I don't think she's here. I think she's been taken because if she, she wouldn't leave the top of the hill. She wouldn't leave from around the house. Mm -hmm. I had her pretty well. I mean, I show all my kids videos on YouTube of what, because we got grizzly bears, we got wild dogs and other things. And so I was worried that they, so I showed them things to try to put a scare into them, not to be, wander off. And Summer would not wander off by herself. No way. Mm -hmm. No way. So when Candace went down the first time, it sounds like she went looking for Summer. She did got she got in go, her mother's truck. Did she went, go into did she go into the basement? Well yeah, she looked all over at first, of course. And she and then the, and that's when she called you. Yeah, when she couldn't find her right away, she called me. 
Okay, mm-hmm. was the door open or closed, if you remember? Was it locked? Well, I wasn't there, and it, we try to keep that basement door locked. Okay, because, you know, people have said so that you have, the you're the only one with the key. Wide open all the time. Right, but people have said you're the one. No. Go I, ahead. There is no key to the basement door. I think we lost that. Okay, what, about the, dead, the what about the deadbolt, brother? Well, we just lock the regular lock. We don't lock. Well, we'll lock the deadbolt if we're in the house. We can lock the deadbolt from the inside on the basement. We use the upstairs door if we're going somewhere or whatever and lock that one. Okay, that morning when you woke up to go to work, right. was that door opened or clo- or locked or open? I assume it was locked because we locked the doors at night, you know. Okay, so at some point then, if you're assuming it was locked that morning, which way did you go out that door or did you go back out through the kitchen to go to work? I go upstairs and go through the kitchen to get in my truck and head to work. Okay, so you go to you go to work, but that day you didn't take your truck, right? Yeah, I I used the Subaru the day before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had fired Dudley because I was sure he was on meth and acting all crazy and stuff. I mean, just out of his mind. And I even looked on YouTube as to what, how people act when they're on meth, and he fit every single one of them. Well done. Dude, well, come on, man. You, you've you seen a thousand people on meth, bro. You don't have to look on well, YouTube yeah. for that one, buddy. <laughs> come on. That's like a cop looking around for donuts in a donut shop and not knowing what they look like. Come you on. Got, you, hear, <laughs> you hear me? Hey. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. What are, what are we laughing about? Hey, I don't deal with meth. No, no, no. Office. I'm no, I didn't say you. I said you've seen meth. You've seen people on meth you've before. Seen people on meth. You, I mean, it's kind of crazy to look on YouTube. So that, and what well, I said, yeah, go ahead. Well, you, you tend to forget after a while, you know, if, if unless it's something you're dealing with all the time, you, you, you forget little things like that but i knew he was out of his damn mind and saying all kinds of crazy stuff and he couldn't do his job and anyway i don't want to talk about that dude anyway okay. all right that's he, fine he's been, um, he's been proven that he's he just got busted you know for all the charges he's got that's right. all the I need. All, dr- all drugs no problem so let's get back to you decide to take the car that day i took it the day before i think because i've been driving my truck for a long time we went through this already I just wanted to put some miles on the Subaru. So. Oh, okay, so you wanted to drive the Subaru, and and you loaded it up with all your your yeah, stuff. Yeah, the, the day before, and your the day the day before, we had actually had a welfare case where somebody called and said I was letting the kids run around with loaded guns, which was totally idiotic and stupid. So they closed that case the day before that night, about six or about seven. PM, they was out there and closed the case. And the very next day, summer come on missing. But anyway, back to what you're saying. No, that's fine. So somebody had had snitched you off that there was a CPS problem of some sort. No, they said we was letting the kids run around with loaded guns. Okay, well, and CPS worked through that. We don't need to talk about that stuff. Well, yeah, they closed that case the day before. Okay, that's cool. So let's go back to that morning. What time do you wake up? Uh, as soon as the sun hits me, you know, I, I don't set an alarm because I usually work late. So as soon as the sun hits me and it's morning time, I just get up and go and work as late as I can. I don't, and are you working seven to three or what? what's your typical hours? I usually get up and when I go, I work until I just can't stand it. hardly walk no more or whatever. I work as late as I can I try to you know, make, make good money. You know? What's the earliest you wake up? Well, maybe six or seven. I'm not sure. Okay. You know, summertime, June, probably about seven. Okay, so about seven o'clock in the morning, you get up, you go out. Where was Summer that morning? She was right next to me. Okay, tell me about that. Well, like what? I mean, well, you tell me those memories. Well, I always. She usually plays all day, and then. She always, she would always ask me, say, Dad, will you take me to bed? 
because I'm tired, you know. And so I'd always take her downstairs and I'd put her put her in bed and cover her real good, make sure the doors are locked and everything like that, and get her to sleep. And then, I, you know, I might stay up for a little while longer or whatever. But she would always want to go to bed a little bit early, more early than us. Uh, and what time does she go to bed the night before? Probably about, you know, 8.30, maybe 9, something like that. Okay, and what time did you go to bed? Uh, not probably shortly after. Uh, so when you got down there, was she already in bed? Yeah, she was asleep. In your bed? I, yep. you and your Candace. It, it, what, is that a king or a queen down there? I can't remember. It's a king. Okay. So she's sound asleep or is she awake? Sound asleep. Okay. And you get in and then what do you recall about? I'll be right there. I'll, I'll make it short. Just give me yeah. a minute. So give me a few minutes. minutes. Okay. Maybe. Okay. What? You Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Hold on. Okay, I'm fine. That's fine, Every, too. Every, everybody's giving me hell because I'm trying to talk to y'all. I mean, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a lightning rod. You know, yeah. it's all good, though. Um, because they're, they they don't trust what what maybe you may be saying is is maybe heard in different ways. Well, right? well, Everything that's happened, I mean, you know, it's been, it's been so, bad. So you, you get in the car, you go to work. What time do you get to work around? I'm not sure. You know, it takes me an hour to drive out there, so 45 minutes or so. so. Okay, so you're probably there by 8? Probably. And when you got up, where was Candace at 7 a.m.? She was still asleep next to someone. What time, if you recall, did she come to bed that evening? About the same time I did, I'd say. So around 9 o'clock the night before? 9 or 10, something like that. Now, in the past, you told me she used to hit, you know, around 5 o'clock every night, and then she'd kind of zone out. Is that still in play here, or is that... 5 some... o'clock every night. Huh? 5 o'clock every night, I don't understand. Well, no, that she would, you know, take the load off of the day by, you know, maybe having a drink or something, you know, maybe hitting a bowl or something to that effect, you know, back in the day during that time. I mean, was. Well, we used to drink a little, but we never had any problem with our, we keep it pretty much at a minimum. We never had like real alcohol problems mm -hmm. uh, until all this happened and then it, it got pretty bad. Um, okay. But, uh, sure. So you recall maybe around nine o'clock, you know, give or take, right? Yeah. That, that she. We're gonna, we're gonna have. To, we're gonna have to speed this up. I mean, we need to get stuff, and I mean, we've already been through yeah, all. I mean, this. This is, honestly, Don, this. I mean, this is for you, not not necessarily us. Like we're we're just. Yeah, I don't we're, care. You know, I care about summer. I mean, yeah. that's that's what I said. Let's, you know, um, there's a lot of missing kids. You know. Well, yeah, they are. There are, and I've been, I've been part of it for forty years. Yeah, what's so going you're on? preaching to the choir, and that's why I'm trying to help you. Okay, well, I mean, we uh, here's the thing. A lot of people on your chat said they want me to tell the truth. Okay, well, we've always told the truth, but nothing has wavered in our story. And right. You know, the story. The story is consistent with a couple of. I mean, you you know, and I know. I mean, even. And everybody knows. I mean, they've heard it. Unfortunately, sometimes people make mistakes making statements. I mean, that's that's not an uncommon situation. Well, I right? mean, I'm, just, I'm telling you the best that I can from my memory, the way it all happened. I wasn't there when Summer was missing, but I can tell you what I know from my heart and, and Candace's heart and what she's been through. And I've never seen anybody so tore up in my life. And I feel okay, so. very, very sorry for her. So and let's clear. Off, let's off, off, you know, all we, the drama. Yes. Can we clear up the nine one one rumors? Okay. Where, you know, the the call, you know, to nine one one, and then you hear the dispatcher say that mom went on a walk. What What did Candace tell you? Yeah. She said. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, the 
how that got confused like that because Candace, I mean, she's got four kids there. I mean, I don't know how that got misconstrued or whatever, like it did, but it was miscommunication somehow. I don't know how that happened exactly. I'd have to ask Candace, but, but it was just a miscommunication because she never went on a walk. Mm -hmm. What she said, what she said was she said she helped mom with her knee brace and she was always helping her mother with all kinds of things. She's getting older. Um, and I'm sure she was telling the exact truth. Who, when in some of the rough interviews that you've been with, because you, you were interviewed, I'm sure, by the card team, by the FBI and Hawkins, TBI, everybody, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, the, they wanted you to do a poly. Yeah, we and, both, we all three done polygraphs. And me and Candace passed our polygraph. Right. But not the first one. I mean, you... you, okay. you well, the reason that we couldn't do nothing with the first one, okay, we could not sleep. We didn't get no sleep at all for three days straight. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We was a nervous wreck. We didn't know what to do. I wanted to go out and search. I even asked the police. If I, the first day, I was like, I'm going to go search. I'm going to go hit up some of these people in this area. And they, of course, said, fine. And I, we got jammed up right there on the road. It was blocked by search teams and police and everything. I mean, Beach Creek and Ben Hill Road was completely blocked. Right. It was, it was crazy. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and, but so anyway, you, you eventually get a polygraph and it was kind of un inconclusive, wasn't it? No, sir. Okay. No. Okay. Like I said, we haven't slept for three days. Well, you know, if you've been, you should know. Yeah. That, when you take a polygraph, they want you to be real calm. They put all them devices on you and everything. They, they want your heart rate to come down to nothing. So, and then, so they, you sit in a chair for 10, 15 minutes before they even ask you first question. Well, since we haven't had no sleep, we don't want you to make it through. Neither one of us make it through, you know, uh, the first two questions and we're falling asleep and that, that won't work. They can't do that. So they said, go home and do your best to relax and get sleep because we we need you to be alert for this test. And that makes sense, you know. Yeah, that does they, make sense. Mm -hmm. Right. They couldn't even do the test because we had, you know. But when we were able to do the test with our nerve shot and everything else, you know, we both passed. Yes. When, when Candace, when you first heard the story from Candace. I mean, this, I want to take you not from the 911 call, but I want to take you back to help me understand and help us all understand this. You, you guys had, when you get there, now you're not on a cell phone. What's, what's the first thing you guys talk about? Well, the police are there and they're wanting to ask questions. Right. Uh, me and her are looking at each other frantically and we're just lost. We don't know where she's at. We're trying to figure out why the police ain't going to. I'm trying to say, look, she's not here. Well, I know she's not here. You, you need to block off the end of uh, Beach Creek and uh, go over the mountain and block that. I'm thinking in my head and trying to tell them she's not here. And it's like they couldn't hear me. You right. know? It's, okay, but that's you. What were you and Candace talking about? Uh, you know, I really can't remember. Um, we were just mostly miserable and feeling a lot of pain knowing our baby's gone and just hoping that something happens and hoping these police can find her quickly. But, you know, they're wanting to question us, but maybe even keeping us separate, maybe, I, you know, kind of. Okay. Uh, looking what? through our house, um, the, you know, and then the, the, the uh, what you call a team forensics team shows up. And okay. And they're asking hard questions. Um, they, they're wanting some. They want. What course. kind of questions were they asking you, Don? Help me understand that, so I know what frame of mind they were in. Well, at one point they told Candace, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. And they, the one, they, they, they kind of, the TBI, you know, says we want to know what you did with your daughter or something like that. And Candace went off and told them, "F you." She was had tears in her eyes. And she just pretty much, you know, go to hell, f off. I mean, and they's like, 
shook their head like that's the kind of response was looking for kind of thing like that you know what i mean yeah that's how did I, you respond how did you respond did you hear that question no, they had me somewhere else that question. I mean, like I said, I think it was kind of quick keeping us apart. So did she share that information with you then? Yes. Okay. And how about you when she when you finally had a chance, brother, to talk to her one on one? What 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 were you asking her if you remember? I don't really remember. We're just both in shock. I mean, okay. that's our that's our bag. We love our kids, man. We love them all very much. And Summer, she was just so brilliant, smart. And it was, it was, we just not can't hardly believe that she's just gone. I mean, we're both in shock. Yeah, when when I mean, well, and then what? It, how about the boys? How were you able to keep them? Um, you know so that they're not freaking out either what tell me about how you interacted with the boys that night oh well, i just tried to comfort them the best i can but they the the younger ones that didn't seem to bother so much at first they just went on playing whatever but josie you know the older ones they're old enough to understand more you know so it's bothering them some and i mean i was sitting outside and one evening just in tears and Josie come out to me and says dad it's not my fault and I says Josie I know son I know it's not your fault and I give him a, we just hugged for a long time you know so he was it was you know it's, it's a mess it's a mess no no I get it I get it I think and and so when what about other people that showed up who's this help me understand who this uh, Tim guy is I've never met the guy in my life, but he has got a lot to say. And how did how did he get involved in this? He's just somebody, a good friend, turned out to be a good friend that's kind of helping me, that's been through, and through all this stuff pretty much all his life and understands it and is just trying to help me understand, you know, the whole YouTube thing and all the drama and the, the problems that it creates. You know, all that kind of stuff. It's It's been pure hell. Mm -hmm. you know? And so what was the, when did Miss Robin and this, uh, the pastor, David, get there? Um, they tried to come in, but see, they, they had the police staying. It was parked right outside our door for like, I don't know, a long time, a week, a week. And then they had the road blocked off on Ben Hill for like, two weeks or something like yeah about two weeks i think for a long time i mean nobody was coming in and nobody was going out for a long time mm -hmm. and don oh, go sorry ahead. why do you think that why do you think that joe is it just because he was the oldest why he felt that way i mean why would he think that this was all his fault or was he just i mean you know let me, i don't want to put words in your mouth but um, well, uh, I think because me and Candace was just so heartbroken that he was seeing how we was feeling kind of thing. And we wasn't, I wasn't really realizing that I wasn't, I'm not the same person at this point. I'm not giving them attention and showing them love like I probably should have. I'm, I'm freaking out and I'm not handling it too well. And uh, I don't know why he, he just come up to me and said, it's not my fault. And that's when I just said, I know, you know, and I, and I, and I hugged him. And we sat there and hugged for a long time. I mean, sure. yep, I don't gotcha. know exactly why. So, well, somebody says here in the comments, kids say things like, it's not my fault when parents are upset sometimes. I, I, I don't, I, I agree with that. Well, so, Don, Donnie, I, well, first of all, I, w I want to, you know, tell you, I appreciate having a, a civil conversation with you. Well, and the same here. And I appreciate it very much. Okay, so, and, you know, we may not see eye to eye all the time, but that doesn't mean we can't have these kind of conversations, right? Yes, that's right. Can we do this another time? Maybe maybe sure. you guys can think about it, and uh, let's, maybe yeah. if we can be civil and stuff, you know, and yeah. we can, if we yeah. can find our daughter and other kids, man, I'm all for it, okay? Yeah, and now how can the Cold Case Foundation help you? What I do don't you know. I don't know. Um, well, maybe I know. you guys can talk about that 
and just out of you know okay. the, all right we'll, and, we'll, go ahead. we'll think about it we'll think about it and you and i appreciate you guys being civil that's that's awesome and uh and we'll try to do this another time okay sure everybody everybody's sure. getting upset with me right now and i gotta okay. well i'll tell I you this don, don, don let do. me tell you this really fast there's nothing for anybody to be upset about because I, I, there is right. not, there was nothing, there's nothing wrong with this conversation. And if people right. don't want you to have this conversation with us, with Chris, then they no. don't have your best interest in mind either. If that's how they feel. I want to do it, but I have to get ready for work tomorrow. Stuff. And I'd like, and, I and I appreciate it. Like I said, that's, that's no. just cool. Okay. I really do. It. okay. And, um, All right, we man. Just, I'll holler at you later, Josh. Okay. okay. Sounds great, I'll, man. Take care. All right. You. you have a good night have a good night um so let's keep going on the the call real fast because we're almost done yeah that's a good segue look i i appreciate him coming up on, and yeah. talking i had no issues you know like like he he knows how i feel about it and 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 but we that doesn't mean that i'm right and that doesn't mean that we can't be civil it's not, you know, people are saying that we failed and we took another test. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. We just weren't able to. So when we did take them, we both passed, you know, our, our tests. I imagine that if it, it measures changes in your blood pressure or something based on if you, if you tell, if you tell a lie, your, your blood pressure changes, but if you're tore off pieces, then your blood, your blood pressure is probably changing anyways. Well, the, way, the way it works is, kind of it measures your brain's activity too and whenever you lie you have to think about that lie when you stick with the truth it just comes out you know the truth is the truth mm -hmm. but when you lie you got to think about that for a little bit and your heart might jump just a little bit or whatever you know they, they look at all that um, yeah so do you it's easy to tell the truth put it that way <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> Um, so did they, I know this is kind of a, this is a hard question to ask, but did they ever do any, do any question of your sons also, or, or any kind of? Yeah, they, they, they've taken them into specialists because they got scammed, quit out, come out and question them. But yes, they have questions. That's standard, right, Chris? I mean, for, yeah, for and, and it's consistent with, quite frankly, what he just said. Right. And all of them. Mm -hmm. They even give mother-in-law lie detector tests. Oh wow! And she had, she also passed. Okay. So this, I mean, I I, I didn't go up to your house the, when when they took the, the roadblock down. I didn't I didn't want to just bust up there and uninvited, but I did go to the end of your driveway and look up. And I mean that that for somebody to go up there and not knowing what they're going to find seems highly unlikely. So this is the, so, and, and Don, I don't know if you're still watching or anything, but in people in the chat, I want people to realize this is where for me, the rubber meets the road when it comes to really struggling with this story. And Don himself has said to me, I get it. It seems unlikely. It seems impossible. This is where the story to me just you know, and I'm not saying that what I'm saying is Don could have very well been lied to. And, and, and it happens all the time, but if let me just restart this really quick and, and you can kind of hear because it, 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 it feels that way. Uninvited, but I did go to the end of your driveway and look up and I mean that, that for somebody to go up there and not knowing what they're going to find it seems, it seems highly unlikely because that man that's straight up and you can't see where you're going you don't know what's, which was yeah. ahead of you and we've uh, had several people sneaking around there though and that's i mean it, but more we've had them sneak around at night in the middle of the night yeah we've never had somebody up there 5 30 in the afternoon that we know of you know mm -hmm. but they were they didn't come up the driveway they come up a dog trail from the woods. Oh, okay. They didn't go the way. And that dog that they used, that's where the sand took them, was down through the woods, not the driveway. Where, where did the dog scent end? 
at the road, the Ben Hill Road, is where the dog sent him. Is. Oh, man. Yep. So that right there, you know, I already knew all that, but that there just confirmed it for me. Yeah. Do you still believe, do you believe that she's still alive? Do you have any intuition that she might still be out there somewhere? I have no idea. Yeah. All I know is, is uh, you know, I believe in God. I don't believe in any psychic stuff. Oh, man, that stuff's horrible that they've had on, I've seen it on YouTube. That's that's terrible. Who? Well, why would somebody? That's that, it, the, the the morals of a person that would put that out there. With the, what they've been saying. Yeah, somebody somebody uh, made a fake account with me, and then and then they put on there to some other woman that I buried her body with the lake. And so, if the TBI has been out the lake, they couldn't get a hold of me because I was in church, but they've been out there looking for her body. It's just ridiculous what people are doing, and they're going with these psychics and what they're saying and doing whatever they can to get their story out there. But the Bible says clearly it's an abomination. Right. And when you do a psychic and you think of talking, you know, to your dead relatives or whatever, that's untrue because Jesus made it clear that when you die, you sleep until the resurrection. You are in no conscious state whatsoever. You are just unconscious, asleep, as Jesus put it, until the resurrection. So if you're talking to somebody, it's an evil spirit. Let me ask you this. Is there anything that your family needs? Like, is there, is there anything that the community can do aside from tipsters and things like that and information? But is there anything that you people in your family need? That the community I, you know, the only thing that, no, we, we're, I think we're good on everything. The only thing that I wish is, you know, there's a country that, and I, I, the way these kids are coming up missing left and right and all the drugs, Man, we need to send our military into our own country. You know, that's my opinion. We send our, our military everywhere in the world to fight terrorism. Well, I think it's time we turn them into our own country to fight terrorism. I think Don may uh, have a future in foreign policy. They can't seem to catch these guys nowhere. We need our military. Mm -hmm. You know, to put them to some good use. I mean... <laughs> That's what I wished. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I, um, think, I know you probably, uh, you're on break. And probably, go ahead. I think he's going to, that was pretty much the end of it, right? Yes. Yeah. We're about that. Um, so I think, well, what's your thought? I mean, this is your show. Well, let me, um, there's some good questions here. Let me just go through these really quick. Um, don't let Satan win. Get them, boys. Well, appreciate you, true cowgirl. Um, why haven't we heard the 911 calls? I, I would imagine that it's probably because of the investigation, uh, that it could be part of their investigation. And, and, uh, I think, you know, that's possible. Finally made alive with my two favorites. Appreciate that. Outstanding. Um, great point, Josh. He should be open to all ideas until she's home. Agreed with that as well. Yeah. Uh, who was at the house when Ellie arrived? I think, Don went over that. And, and by the way, once again, I do want to say, look, whether you think whatever you think of Don and his interview with us, if you believe him, you don't believe him. I mean, it's it it isn't easy what he did to come up and talk to two of us who have been especially me, who have been very, very open and, and critical and about, you know, him. So once again, I mean, that is. um. Uh, too little, too late. Yeah, I, you know, I, I found that odd. Uh, Jesse, thank you for that. Um, Dawn, thank you for talking. Please let Chris and the Cold Case Foundation help. We all only want her found too. That's the truth. Uh, Jackie, thank you as well. Um, Jesse, again, is Bobo a veteran by any chance? I don't know Bobo. Ears wide open. Great job. Uh, nice, Marie. Thank you. Um, Don, I can hear your hurt and confusion, Don. Thank you. Um, thankful to hear you talking sober and heartfelt. Your daughter needs to be, needs you to be your hero. You can look, man, you know, my thoughts on this, Chris, are, I think that 
I think that he's trying to be as truthful, but I do still feel that there's, there, there is a huge, there's something there that is obviously missing. Well, it's, it's, it's summer, but I don't have the same faith in his wife as he does. I just don't. And I, I don't think that that's unfair to say. Well, and the only way that can be balanced out is let him talk to Candace. Right. I mean, we had a civil conversation today. Yeah. yeah it was and good. we can, you know, have another one. He's open to it. I'm open yeah. to it. You're open to it. We'll do it here again. It's a safe, safe forum for him. Okay. And everybody else, I mean, the, the chat, everybody's been, you know, very uh, respectful. And what I'm interested in is a couple of things, obviously, and I hope you're listening, Don. I think it would be great to have Candace come up and talk with you, the two of you, but also maybe have her do it one-on-one -on -one with us. And then we could do all of us. But I I still like you, Josh. There's I think Don he could have been at war. He could he could have not been there. Let's sure. put it that way. Of course. Okay. And he is stuck. And now, and I don't know what, you know, pre behave, you know, pre-incident, post-incident. I just know that he feels stuck and there's a part of him that wants to say, and to your point, and there's another part of him that says, if he does say, then all of the dominoes start to fall. Okay. Rock in a hard place. Right. He's stuck. And so now that's where the cold case foundation can come in, in terms of helping him understand how this could all potentially play out. If he, you know, does want to. Uh, and, you know, we, we'll talk about that offline, but, you know, I believe that at this point, the fact that um, he took the link and he came up here to talk civilly and people were pounding him on the other side, i.e. don't talk to that guy or talk to you, and, you know, us, the fact that he did that, I think is a signal that two years has been a long time and go ahead. It eats you alive. I mean, what's, what's going on? Guilty, not guilty, knowledge, no knowledge. It's all going to eat you alive. And I, I agree. And you know, when he says things like, you know, we love our kids. I never, I've never said that he doesn't, I've never said that they don't. I, I, I'm, I'm with them there. I am, you know, but I, you know, the whole, the, the one thing that I have always struggled with is, is, you know, like that interview, I thought that the interview that you did with Candace was fair and, and accurate. And, and I think a lot of people did make that decision for themselves. And I, and I understand I'd be pissed off too. You know, Don and I had a conversation where he was saying, you know, this person said a lot of bad things about me. And what I said to Don was, Hey, Don, they say bad things about all of us. You, me, Don, Candace, whoever. They say it about Trevor, uh, all of us, Miss Daisy, you know, everybody. Everybody gets gets mud flung at them. And now couple that with your daughter missing. I understand the, the you know, the, the anger and the annoyance. And, you know, when he came up here, he first thought we were just talking about something else totally you know people say calling you know whatever we never had any interest in, in talking about that and still don't yeah I, I we don't care what's going on over out there the, oh, we're, I don't care. We're, we're focused I'm we're actually focused on summer uh Correct. unbeknownst to people and the biggest one of the biggest takeaways that we heard from don tonight was the fact that when he woke up in the morning and he left, that door was locked. Yeah, I heard that. So now let's have a deeper conversation because he left that door 
in that bedroom locked. And now we have to find out, okay, and I'm sure Candace can explain it because Candace had made a comment to me about I wasn't sure if it was locked or open. Remember down on the bot when we went down into the into that area? Yeah, yes. And so she was thinking about it too. But tonight, Don, I mean, tells us he went to bed. Candace came down, went to bed. Summer was already there. So all three of them, he got up early in the morning, just as he said. And when he left that door, he didn't go out that door. He went out the front. Mm -hmm. So that means that door was locked. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then we have to think, okay, well, you know, it, it always goes back to this idea of, why the card team, why the victim continuum, the risk continuum, you know, comes into play. So we can talk about that at length with him again. I really appreciated the fact that he, you know, came up and, uh, you know, had a conversation with us. Tonight. Well, I think way, we should take it to the next level. Go ahead. We don't even have to have it like recorded or anything. You know, if he wants to just talk to you. Well, I just... think he feels more comfortable putting it out. I think in so. The public arena. Yeah. Yeah. And and let's let him do that. Yeah, and it, it 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 it's the it sends the right message. Hey, like you know, like I said, it I, I if I was Don, I would be weary as well of coming up and talking to, you know, I haven't been the friendliest. <laughs> I don't really think that you have done anything to Don personally, uh, the way that he feels about it, and, and but. Once again, you know, you're, you're, like you said, you're a lightning rod. You're kind of that figure. He, he knows what the truth is. I mean, and just, you know, he's got a bunch of people around him, you know, that are just, you know, former prisoners and, <laughs> and he's getting jailhouse advice, you know, I mean, ones, they probably. Right? and they hate cops. Okay, great. Whatever. I'm, I'm used to it. You know, move on. Nothing to see change. here. You know, and but Don does want to talk about maybe the next steps. We'll see. The ball's in his court again. He brought it up. He wanted to leave. We let him. We didn't push him. We'll oh. see how all. We'll see what the, all the other. You know, will people say to persuade him otherwise? But well, I think you were very respectful to the the whole situation tonight, and it can't hurt if it means hearing firsthand from the parents of a missing five-year-old little girl. And by the way, she's still five because that's how old she was when she vanished. And we have, you know, not getting in, in the way of the uh, investigation in any way, shape, or form, but for the family, um, we'll see. And I, I'm real curious about that guy, uh, that TM guy. He's how he interjected himself pretty early into this problem. But there, yeah. there it is. It's on like June 27th or something. Sandra, we were reading each other's minds. <laughs> Sandra, you know, you remember that, uh, Chris, don't you? Yes, I do. With Miss Allie. One of my favorite, and one of my favorite family, because that is a mother that is yelling for her child. Across, you know, my aunt, when I used to go uh, to my cousin's house, we would have to cross the freeway to go to the little town down there. She lived up on a hill and she would stand out there and she would yell our names from over the freeway. We could hear it. And uh, it was, it was impressive by any, by any stretch of the imagination. You know, that's funny there. Uh, so I don't know what was your, my takeaway is. She was never. My takeaway is he, he's going to come back and we'll talk again. Sure. And it's possible that she got hurt and um, he wasn't there and people panicked. Yeah. It, it, yes. That I've, I've always felt like that, but you know, um, but I just don't know. Yeah. Well, don't. Yeah. The, the, the random abduction theory, we need to talk a little bit deeper about it because 
that it, that's not lining up from even everything that I know. So I, and I can explain that to him about why. And, and I, you know, most people are pretty rational and I think he sounded pretty rational tonight. He sounded sober. Oh. He sounds like he's doing a great job there and right. um, we'll see what happens. So the ball's in his court. Go ahead. What else you can say? Well, I just want to thank Annabelle Aroma for gifting five memberships. And um, what time, what do we got here? We're an hour 45 in Chris. Look, it's, it's been productive. It's, it was a great show. We finished our phone call. Don came up. We had a civil conversation. That's something we've been looking for for over a year and a half, probably. Um, and it, it wasn't an ambush. Like if he would feel, uh, I thought that we were completely fair and, uh, you know, we'll see how, we'll see how people, like you said, we'll see how people react. It, it's, you know, it's whatever, but he obviously wanted to share tonight. Yeah. And that's appreciated. And I think that could go a long way for him. Um, I think you know, he's tired. I think so too. You know, and I, and not only of what I, you know, this is a lot of weight. If you, if you do know what the, you know, there's that old saying that no man got to the top of the mountain by falling there. And sometimes when you get almost to the top of the mountain, you're just exhausted. And, but when you get up on the top, it's usually what, you know, I, I can tell you how, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people that have held information. And then all of a sudden when they just say, okay, this is what happened. They feel a million times better. And quite frankly, you know, it brings that adage, you know, the truth will set you free. And, and um, it gives a, a sense of relief. So thanks for having me on tonight, brother. You're awesome, Chris. We'll talk and soon. Then, I'm going to jump and uh, right, we'll give you tomorrow or whatever it is. Yeah, Tell buddy. And, bye. and call me when uh, he's ready for the next one. Okay. Yeah, totally. I sure yeah. will. I'm, All and right. by the way, I'm, I'm with the card team on this. So I am. Too. See ya. Bye bye. Well, there was guys. Great show. Thank you guys so much. Uh, the super chats and the stickers, the likes, just tuning in. I thought it was a great conversation. And, uh, you know, whether you believe him or not, he understands that the story is difficult to believe that 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 is not in question. Um, uh, I believe that there are chunks of truth in there. And, um, you know, somebody said, that, well, you know, he, he's deflecting. Well, I think that that's pretty normal for, you know, when you're being accused of, of stuff. I get that. I told I, I get it. Uh, and. Like I said, Don and I have talked and said, look, we don't see eye to eye. I've been super hard on him. And he knows that. So. Uh, Lulu says, great show tonight. Thanks, Lab Rats, for being amazing in chat. Thank you guys uh, so much for being here. Have a great night. I believe, what time is it? I think we have a Lab After Dark scheduled for later. Um, you throw the link in the lab after dark. It's just kind of a wind down type show. Um, Mary Martin says so many shady characters, anything is possible. Well, I don't know. That, I don't know if anything's possible, but there's a lot of possibilities. I agree with that. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Uh, thank, thank you again to Dawn for coming up, Chris for coming up and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Appreciate all you guys. Thanks. There is no investigation. This boy has there is not really this to me. We don't say any F's and stuff. But I had to put her on the side and I'm gonna do what I gotta do for me and my boys and my kids. We don't say any F's and stuff. There is no investigation. This boy has not really this to me. Right. Idiot. I got my bells. It's hard, you know, it's actually tough. But I had to
to put her on the side and worry about the boys. I'm going to do what I got to do for me and my boys and my kids. Don't say any F's and stuff. Live from the NBD Production Studios, you're in the lab with your host, Joshua Diaz. There is no investigation. This boy has not really this to me. But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boy. But I have to. There is no investigation. Don't say any F's and stuff. But I have to put her. But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boys.